Okay. Hello and welcome okay. everyone to this Code Hello Refiner and workshop. We're going to spend the next six half days together, not one after another, but in, within these next two weeks, to learn about fair research software development practices. So just a quick recap of why are we here and who am I? Hi, I'm Samantha. I work at CSC in Finland and I'm connecting today from Lohja in southern Finland. So Code Refinery is an addition to the general coding classes you might have at university. So we are not going to teach you how to code here, but we are trying to support you in making your code more reproducible. And we found this wonderful graphic here by Heidi Salbot Seibold to describe the Code Refinery workshop quite well. So six helpful, partly smaller, partly a little bit bigger steps that you can go towards more reproducible research, getting your files in order, finding good names for things, documenting with care that we will talk about in week two. Version control will be the topic of this week. Then stabilizing the computing environment and software and publishing your research outputs apart from your normal publications, also publishing your code. So, and what is Code Refinery? We are a Nordic project to teach these kind of basic scientific computing tools. And we are funded by the Nordic e-infrastructure collaboration, NAIC. And we are running this workshop. And then we also have a bunch of other partnering workshops that we are involved in. And basically what we are is a community of research software enthusiasts. And you will meet many of the people that are involved in the project during this workshop as instructors or behind the scenes. You can find all the information on our webpage, coderefinery.org. Um, Code Refinery in general is a partnership of different universities and um, institutions. From Finland, we have Aalto University and CSC. From Denmark, we have the Center for Humanities Computing and the Danish e Infrastructure Corporation. From Sweden, we have ENCCS and NICE, and from Norway, ENRIS. And if you're interested in joining the project, you can find all the information in our join page for how, for example, to join our chat or the organization of these kind of workshops. Then who is here today? So apart from me, there's also 10 more course coordinators, instructors, and expert helpers, some of who you will meet during the lessons and they will introduce themselves then at the time. Then we have about six or more team leaders who are together with their team watching this stream and collaborating on the exercises. And then we have you, 250 participants about from about 25 different countries with many different backgrounds, many different levels. So this workshop, how, how does this work? If you have made it here, you are basically ready for this because this is a live stream. This is a live streamed workshop. Everyone, no matter how you are watching this, you will watch the live stream where we have the instructors talking, showing and showing demos um, and interacting with you. In week one, there will also be exercises and those you can do in two, mainly two ways, either on your own, or if you have already gathered a team or you are in a room with a team, then you can also do them with your team. One thing that is new compared to previous workshops is that we don't have dedicated team exercise times in week two, but we have a lot of collaboration possibilities with our collaborative document, and I will show that in a moment. Then we plan on having a minimum of 10 minute breaks every hour. If we ever should forget about that, or you think it's time for a break, please let us know. I'll show you in a moment how to do that. Um, the materials are always available for everyone and are linked from the workshop page. That's the page where you also registered. For, so from there, you can find all the links to everything you need. And then because we are streaming this without any danger of participants appearing in the stream, the recordings will be available also right away on Twitch. 
and usually the day after latest also on YouTube. So you can watch something that you missed or watch something again if you want to. Then our um, interaction tool is our collaborative document. So even though this is a live stream, um, there is this tool to um, connect to the instructors and how we can also connect with you. So we use it to distribute information to you, show you some links on where you can find, for example, the material that we are going through right now. And we also use it as a chat and that is maybe for you the most interesting use of the document. So whenever there's any accessibility issues, you can let us know there. But then also you can ask questions at all times, whatever comes to mind, you can just put in the document and either our instructors will pick it up on the stream or our team behind the scenes will make sure that your questions get answers. And you can also answer other people's questions if there is something that you know about. So let's take a look. Uh, you should all have gotten the link with the registration information. So when you registered, you got an email, the link was in there, and then you also probably got another email where this link was also part of. You can also, okay. Um, and in this document, you can find all the important links of this workshop. You can find the agenda for today with also here behind the welcome and practicalities, the link to the document that I was showing before and then the link to materials for today. And then we have a little icebreaker for you, which many of you already filled in. That's very nice to see. So let's see if we can do that as well. I can see that already 102 of you are also online here. So let's see how that goes. So when you join this document, you'll probably see something like me here, nicely rendered. But now we want to also add something to this document. And for that, you can usually find this little pen symbol up left. Um, if you have a slightly different view, it might also be somewhere up right, but it's always like this kind of pen or edit symbol. So when we click that, we switch into edit mode. And then we can scroll around and see, okay, here, this is now the raw text for our rendered document. We have the links here, we have the agenda here, and then we have the icebreaker. Where are you connecting from and how's the weather there? Let me add that here also. So I, I sit in Lohja in Finland and the weather is sunny with some clouds. And now you can go also please here and get used to this document. We'll add a few more possibilities here. You can see where others are with these little markers here. So try to find a line where there's only you. Add some more if you need them. This is a very good way to now get used to the document because we will use it throughout the whole course and it's really our main um, communication channel. You can see this is going well. And then we have another question for you because today it's all about version control. So here we want to know, have you used Git before? And it is no problem if you have never heard what Git is, then you can put your little O here. Don't know what Git is. I vote for this one. If you know what it is and have used it and want to specify it a little bit more, so I have, for example, used git via the command line. So I will add my O here. And if your option is not available here, you can also add it below here. And our instructors then get a little view of where you are and where they need to pick you up for this course. If you then scroll a little bit down, um, here you can already ask questions and I see you have already been very busy asking questions. 
um, about this session, the welcome and practicalities. And then when we later go on to the introduction with version control, you can ask your questions here. So yeah, go ahead, add your questions there whenever you need to. And then you can switch to view mode to see this nicely rendered version. And usually we suggest whenever you're not editing to switch to this view mode. Okay, so that was the collaborative document. And we ask you to please not use the Twitch chat for any questions about the content because we will not be watching this, but we will collect all the questions in this collaborative document. Okay, I've shown this. Then practical setup for the workshop. Um, one thing that we would suggest you to do, you don't have to, but we suggest you to create a directory or folder for this course on your computer. In that way, you can have all the exercise material in one place, and that makes it much easier to clean up later. So that is a good thing to do right now while you're listening with one ear to what I have to tell here during the next few minutes still. Then you might have noticed that within Twitch, we are um, sharing a vertical window. So that means it is quite nice for you that you can give half the screen to us with the Twitch view. And then the other half is for you where you can keep open, for example, the collaborative document to ask questions. Uh, if you are doing the exercises, you can keep your terminal or your um, browser open. And in that way, you can even participate in this course with only a laptop screen. And for Twitch, you can hide the chat and then use the theater mode to have it in this kind of setup. And all of our instructors will share it this way. Okay, now you might say, oh, this is so much information, so much things that I need to keep track of. So where to focus? Well, your first priority should be the live stream. This is where everything happens. Then whenever you have a question, uh, it's good to have the collaborative document there. And then the lesson material webpage, you usually don't need much. Uh, it's good to have it open. So if you missed like a command or something, you can check it up there, but you don't need to have it open at all times if, if it's all too much to do at the same time. And if you know some of the materials already that we were presenting here, then please help us also answering the question in the collaborative document, because as you have seen, we have about 250 people here. So in order to give everyone the answers and maybe even discuss some different viewpoints about questions, um, please help us fill in here. And for that, please keep in mind that everyone is, is at different levels and that's also expected. We have this course open for everyone. So everyone is also both a teacher and a learner. And um, when here on stream, something isn't quite going right, like some issues with audio or any of these things, then you can always use the collaborative document to let us know quickly. And then also the instructors will get to know about it. We have a code of conduct in place that you can find behind this link here, and there's also a form to fill out if there has been violations of the code of conduct. We have a few things that can and quite possibly will go wrong in this course. Um, one are the these accessibility problems. So we have tried to do a sound check, but it might always happen that a microphone um, does something weird or something. Let us know as quickly as possible if you notice anything like this, or if the font is not big enough or these kind of things. Then um, also our instructors are only human and they might make mistakes. No one knows everything. Um, seeing how these mix mistakes happen and how they can get fixed is also really part of this course. It's part of the pedagogy of this course. So please be nice to everyone. If you get overloaded with information, don't worry. Um, you can change your watching style, meaning you can even step away from the computer for a while, get back and use the replay function in Twitch to watch where you left off. 
if the collaborative document gets too fast to follow, you noticed it already now during the icebreaker, it can get quite chaotic, then just leave it be. And you can always look at it later. Uh, if you have a question, you can put it there and then put it aside and come back later to review the answers to the questions. Sometimes it may also be that we cannot solve your problem because there is something deeper than what we have access to via the collaborative document. Then it's good to contact your local IT support, for example, or if you are in a team room to ask your helper in the break or after the course for some help. We also have these bring your own code sessions uh, every Tuesday after this workshop for two times. You can find it in the schedule where we can look at these kind of issues. And you can always watch the watch the materials also without doing any exercises. If we deviate from the schedule, um, then it's probably something that didn't go as planned. And then we try to leave out some subtopic that maybe is not that important, but the material is there for you. So you can review it if this is an important topic for you that we might have to leave out. But we try, of course, our best to stay on track. Then it might be that the collaborative document lags and text goes wrong or everything looks somehow weird. Um, that can happen with very high load if really everyone tries to do something at the same time. So please everyone then switch to view mode and wait for it for a moment to calm down. So that's why it's always good to keep it also in view mode when you are not editing it. And then we also have uh, our, our colleagues in the background that will move stuff of the document to an archive so that we can keep the, the active document quite short. If the stream suddenly dies, that can also happen. We have Richard here, our broadcaster, and if his computer just decides to give up, then just wait a moment and we will resume in about five minutes to get it set back up. Um, then for the, for the exercises, it's important that you have some software set up or, and configured. And if you haven't done that, it's okay. You can just watch and see how other people are working it and maybe fix it for the next day. And we have installation instructions to see what might be missing or how you can get the parts together. If you can't attend every day, it's not a problem. You can always just attend the parts that you are interested in or where you don't have other meetings or anything like that. The materials are always available. The videos are also available. Sometimes we have cats visiting some of the instructors, then everyone just stay calm and wait for a moment till the danger passes. And if the course is too cool and you want to know more, then we will have some hints for you in the workshop outro in the end of day six. You can, for example, join as a team leader next, next time or advertise to your organization to become a partner of the Code Refinery workshop. And then before we jump into version control, some final notes, uh, please register if you haven't yet. Um, that means that you will get emails from us with the updates about what happened every day and what needs to be done in preparation for the next day. It helps us with our reporting. And um, you will also get the link to the collaborative document, for example. And the registration goes via the workshop page. About privacy, um, since we are here on stream, only the instructors, there's no way for your audio or video to end up broadcasted or recorded. The only way where this can happen is via our collaborative documents. So that's why we ask you to not put any names or identifiable info in this collaborative document because instructors may show it to answer some of your questions, for example, and that will end up on stream. And the contents of the document will be screened after every, uh, after every course day, and then they will be posted on the course page. So then it is definitely without names, but it makes our tasks easier if you don't put them there in the first place. And then if you would like a certificate for the course, I think I've seen already a question about that also in the collaborative documents. Um, in the local teams at universities, for example, ask from your team leader 
and then you can find some in general instructions for these certificates behind this link on our work page. And then once more, Code Refiner is an open project. Uh, you can get involved, you can join our chat. We have some manuals on how we organize these workshops. And we always need volunteers and partners to continue making this also a success in the future. And we are very happy to also welcome uh, new institutional partners. And then if you like this workshop, please share your experiences about it on social media with this code refinery hashtag. And we are also on Mastodon, Twitter and LinkedIn. And now I've already taken a few too many minutes, so I will give over right away to Radovan and Gregor, who will guide you to our first steps into version control.